even this sort of carport is like futuristic. It's almost, I almost feel like I'm entering a space shuttle or something, driving yeah. into a... <laughs> but it's very convenient because it's a steep hillside. Just to explain what you found here, because I think this is a unique property, right? Yeah. Well, originally, I came down the street and this property was not for sale. But I went down to the bottom because the lot there was for sale. And I looked up and I said, well, this is a much nicer lot than that one's for sale. So I found out who owned it, called them up and asked them if they wanted to sell it. And they said, yes. And did you think, okay, how am I gonna build on something so well, steep? They thought it was unbuildable, but I knew you can build something on it. So I wasn't worried about that. So this property got it for a good price because it was considered unbuildable. <laughs> Just because it, how steep is it? What are we talking uh, about here? If you go down the hill this way, it's a 30 degree angle. So you just wanted to have it sort of sail off the side. Yeah, I just wanted it to soar out into space, but then yet still feel that was tied to the hillside. You know, the house centers on Mount Hood and then you have the Willamette River right below you. You hear the sounds and activities, what's going on on the river, but you don't hear the highway behind me because the house and these sidewalls block the sounds. So it's very nice and relaxing on this deck. I think there's something special about looking out over a treetop. Oh yeah, it's so wonderful. And uh, that's the amazing thing. You're on the top parts of the trees all of a sudden you see the forest in a completely different way and it's really amazing. So you're, there, you're, a lot of this house is floating on air. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it would have been nice to be able to build something that defies gravity, but uh, we can't quite do that. So, you know, I, I just kind of wanted that feeling of floating in space and kind of relaxation of it all. And the site called for that. There wasn't a lot of option. I mean, there's not a lot uh, of flat land here. You know, some people would have taken the hillside and plowed out a flat building pad and build a house that can be on any flat piece of land. But I wanted to let the land express itself. So how did you know this would be buildable? Oh, just uh, from experience. You know, I knew that you can build anything really. Really? <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't that hard because this was built with mostly unskilled labor. What do you mean by that? Kids from high school dropouts and from drug rehab programs, you know, who had no building experience before, gave them the tools and uh, had one guy that knew what you had to do. How did you what inspired that? Like, what made you think to work with kids and... and... Uh, well, I'd like to say because of social conscience and this and that, but it was kind of economics. Really? <laughs> yeah. So know. it was a more affordable way? It was a much more affordable way to build a house. Well, I joke that this is the party kitchen because you have this big wide counter space and all the food goes on it for a potluck and then People, you know, this is wide here, so people could be standing here talking and so forth, and you can move by, and then you have the window seat where everyone can sit down on, and then you can move all the way around and come around the other side, so you have this complete circulation uh, where nobody gets boxed into the kitchen and can't get out. I like how the cabinets are just, it's one big curve. They're square boxes, really, that just segmate around the curve. I made a quesadilla. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. It's a good thing I took some cheese out of the uh, freezer. <laughs> this is the main wow. portion of the house, the family section of it. So you have your granddaughter in the family section now? Yeah, well, she used to live here. What'd you think of growing up here? I thought it was cool. My friends thought it was really cool. They said this house was like a spaceship. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I just feel like it's just floating out into space. Well, actually, some people refer to it as the funnel house because 
from the bottom it starts small and it gets bigger as you go up. And the reason for that is that the family spaces take up the most space. So you want the family to everyone take advantage of the views. So that's where most of the square footage of the house is. And as you go down, you need less and less square footage. So it's kind of built reverse from the average house. It's so interesting how much around space changes things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? It's like. A yeah. What was this inspired by? Was it, it was just solving problems. So the kitchen's here on the east side, so you can. I don't drink coffee, but other people do, and they can sit here and have, in the wintertime, a cup of coffee with the sun hitting them on their backs. It's also, you know, very open, so you can have large parties with potlucks, and you have this large counter space to put food on. You can squeeze 16 people into this window seat, and you can move around the cabinet that separates the kitchen from the living area. So it's not like a kitchen where you're trapped in and you can't get out. Look at the turkey vultures. There's what? two of them outside. Oh, that's great. There's turkey vultures. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah, you see that one there? That's actually a turkey vulture. But, it, but it's nice when you're sitting on the deck and they fly below you. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. That's a hawk. Oh, that's the, uh, that the red hawk. tail. Yeah. yeah. They like to land right on here. Yeah. In the summertime, the sun, you know, the overhangs block the sun out, but in the wintertime, it lets the sun completely in. And you go straight back in this way you see the office oh no this isn't the office up here my studio is down on the lowest level of the house this is just a work table but this is really the sitting area i like how you don't think okay i need a room with four walls and i need windows that are just boxes in the wall like you yeah. really no. let all that go well the previous house i lived in it had this magnificent window and it had a beautiful view of Mount Hood. And my regret was that I slept with my eyes closed and I would miss, I miss all of these things. So in this house, I wanted a completely different experience. So I wanted to move the sleeping area back further away, but I did sneak in where you can lie in bed and you can look all the way out. And also when you're lying in that day bed, you can focus on Mount Hood. Is that a guest bed? That's a day bed. Oh. And then these doors slide open and close. This is an abstraction of the floor plan to the house. This is the kitchen. This is the deck on the opposite side of the living room. And we'd be standing in this area, which this is the sitting room and the main uh, primary bedroom. And we're actually above where you parked your car in the carport right now. Usually it stays open like that. It only closes off if I feel that I want to have some privacy or something. And then this just goes back to a wardrobe closet and bathroom. It's great. That bathtub is sitting in nature, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I mean, it feels like you're in the forest. Yeah. Uh huh. Like, did you? Did you? Yeah, but I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm ten minutes from downtown Portland. <laughs> I'm living in a city and I'm 10 minutes from downtown. <laughs> so did you think, how do I get this so I, I can put my tub in the freeze? Yeah, you kind of start thinking about these things. Uh, well, it'd be nice to have an outdoor shower, but most of the time of the year it's too cold for that. So uh, I did this, so I, it feels like it's an outdoor shower. And if I open that window all the way, you get the breeze coming in. And Step yeah. out that way. You see the squirrels, sometimes a rabbit. Neighbor's cat likes to sleep on the deck out there. So there's always a lot of visitors that come to see me when I'm here. Did you want that to look like a funnel or did that happen? 
that just happened because most of the square footage is up on top and as you go down the house gets smaller and smaller so it just takes that shape my studio needed even less space so it just got smaller and smaller as you went as you go up the higher up you get the better the view becomes but also the higher up you get the noisier the highway becomes so it was important to block out the sound here you can kind of see how that deck cantilevers out. So the deck is basically perching over the landscape. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so from the top of the deck down to the ground is about 54 feet. You kept these two trees in here. You wanted to keep these trees here. Oh, I, I wanted to save every tree on the property. So, you know, we didn't cut down any trees to build the house. But this is where, where I work. Wow, so this is just a small compare. I mean, the home is so big up there and it really comes down to the bottom of the funnel. It's just a yeah. tiny space. Yeah, and this is where I spend most of my time because I'm here working every day. And when I'm working, I don't even look out at the view. But I see the sunshine and I feel the breeze coming through. So it makes it very comfortable. Is this yours? This looks like your work. Yeah, uh-huh. There's gonna be five homes. So the house that's under construction right now is this one here. Next door, about 25 feet away, will be this house. So they're right next door to one another. So the forms are similar forms, but they're used in different ways and materials uh, it will be similar, so it's going to feel like a bouquet of flowers. When you're up on the upper levels, which is the family space, you're right at the top of the trees and you experience the view in that perspective. But you go down to the bottom floor and you see the forest in a completely different way because you're down and now you're seeing the trunks of the trees. You're not just seeing the tops of the trees. So it's a different experience as you move vertically through the house. Well, you know, nice thing is a homeowner of one home doesn't have to worry that some ugly house is going to go right next door to them. You can see that the forms are similar forms used in completely different ways each time. So it's all going to feel like they belong together in one subdivision. It's crazy that those can be, a it can be a development that's the, right? Like the developments you think of the sort of tract homes yeah. and the, you know. Why have we never seen any development like this? Why is it always the same? I think people, you know, are afraid to be individuals and uh, they want to be just like everyone else, unfortunately. So it's kind of like, give me more of the same, oh Lord, I deserve no more. <laughs> it's kind of that mentality, unfortunately. It, this is in a very forested uh, landscape, so it's, it's going to be very nice when it all gets done. It, it looks like a jungle almost because of the shape of the homes. The homes kind of perching yeah, above. They, it's like well, this... they, they kind of grow like a stem going up and then it blossoms into a flower. It opens up and blossoms out. So that, that's kind of the intent of the structures. So you're influenced by nature. Yeah. You worked with Frank Lloyd Wright Jr., is that right? I worked, I did two summers uh, with him. I, I remember the sentence by Frank Lloyd Wright when he's talking about the mountain that a house should be on the brow of the hill, not on top of the hill. And what I want to do in a structure is I want the structure to be at peace with its environment, but I want people to be at peace within the structure. 
I can see Mount Hood. So on Sunday, you know, I can say, oh, I'm just relaxing, looking up Mount Hood. I'm not watching the football game. <laughs> I'm just surprised that we don't see more of this. I don't know why. It's kind of like everything you've done, all your designs, I'm yeah. looking at thinking, oh. I, I don't know why. You know, people want to have the same thing over and over again. In the 33 years I've lived here, the trees across the river just keep on growing and growing. So half of the view I have is missing now, yeah. but you always get the view of the river. And that's really the beautiful thing because the water movement is always different. So these changing elements are a part of the experience in the house? You it's, a, it's part of the experience that you have by living here and being able to see these things makes life wonderful. You feel great to be alive. <laughs>